I'm John Bondi. I'm a guide on the Detroit River. This is our second video of our river fishing series. Today I'm going to talk about something that I love to do, and that's jig for muskie. When you think about it, in all of history, nothing has caught more fish than a jig has. Be it freshwater, saltwater, or any species, jigs catch active fish, neutral fish, negative fish, suspended fish. There's no other lure besides live bait that can do that. So why don't you see people jigging for muskie? I think we've been trained over the years that a muskie is a shallow water fish that you would cast bucktails and different lures at, but when uh, you are willing to fish deep water, you will open up new doors to your angling. And that's what I've tried to do in my whole career, is try to try different things. And this deep water muskie jigging is one of my favorite things that I've come across. The best thing about jigging for muskie in a big river like this is when it works. It works all the time under all conditions. I can't say that for bucktail fishing. On a day like today, it's high noon, the sun's out, it's calm, I'm going to put them bucktails away. That's when I fish deep. When I started fishing deep by jigging for them, I found one positive thing. All the big ones that I catch are in the deep shipping channels. Every 50 inch fish that I catch are always coming in 20 to 30 foot of water in this river. That's what's excited me the most about it. I've tapped into these deep water fish that I didn't know were there 20 years ago. There's some great aspects about jigging for muskie that I gotta tell you about. When I'm casting a bucktail, I can oftentimes see that fish coming. And your lure is going half the speed that the fish is, so the strikes aren't as hard as when you're jigging. When you're vertical jigging, it's straight beneath you. We're using heavy duty equipment, and when that fish strikes, it T-bones the lure. It's the closest thing you can find to saltwater fishing in fresh water. And probably the absolute best aspect of this is when you're jigging a channel like this, the fish aren't solitary. You'll catch one, two, three, four more on one drop-off. It might take you till three in the afternoon to find that drop-off, but I've pulled as many as ten or more off a single drop-off in the river once I found them. So for some reason, be it the environmental conditions, uh, the bait fish are there, the wind is right, the current is right, everything's right, it draws a fish to that break line for that day. All the fish in that region are right there. So they may not be there tomorrow or three, four hours later, but right there when you're fishing it, if you get bit, you run up and make another pass and make another drift, you'll get another one. 80 to 90% of the time there's more than one on that spot. That's what's so great about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over the equipment, we're going to show you how to properly jig in this river, and uh, it's going to be a great day. We're going to show you some fish too. There's a bunch of tools that are needed in muskie fishing that you don't need in other kind of fishing. You need some split ring pliers, you need bolt cutters, you need long needle nose, spare pliers, hook sharpener, and some big jigs. Also, these are very handy gloves. I've been to the hospital four times in recent years because I wasn't wearing my gloves and got into some hairy situations. These are fish handling gloves and they work great. With this kind of musky fishing, as with other kinds of musky fishing, you must have extreme confidence that you're going to catch them. I tell people in my seminars that the only place success comes before work is in the dictionary. As funny as that may sound, it's true. You gotta really burn it into your mind that this technique catches muskie. And you'll be shocked at how big they are when you bring them to the top. Part of having good success is having the right rod and reel combination. I learned early on that short, stiff rods were not the key to catching these deep water jigging fish. I broke four rods the first week I jigged for these suckers. Because they, although they were stout, they were too short. And on the hook set, they just couldn't handle the shock from this heavy duty braid fished right beneath you. After years of fishing these muskie in the deep water, I've settled on an eight foot musky rod, pretty heavy duty, and uh, I don't like to have whippy rods at all. Whippy rods are good for nothing in musky fishing. All they do is absorb the energy that your wrists and arms put into it when you're setting the hook. So heavy duty, eight foot rod, and I use a round reel of some sort. Various brands are out there. They have a lot of torque, these round reels. And I use 80 pound braid. You can use any kind you like, but heavy duty, 80 pound braid. I've, you can get away with 65. And I use heavy duty leaders for this kind of fishing. This is heavy duty fishing, about as heavy as you can get in fresh water. I happen to make these leaders out of 200 pound downrigger cable. It's a little extreme, but the fish will bite with it and I don't ever have to worry about breaking one. I'll break this 80 pound braid well before I'll break any of this. I use 200 pound split rings on my lures and I never have a problem getting them to the top. When I first started doing this musky jigging, I couldn't find anything in the musky market to do what I wanted to do. I was using saltwater baits and different things like that. So I decided to make my own, and it's called the Bondi bait. If you've musky fished, you've probably heard of it. Well, today I'm going to show you how it works. Now I'm about to show you how to jig this in the Detroit River. 
but it works everywhere. The St. Clair River, other big navigational rivers like this, it works in small rivers that have holes in them. Anywhere near your house that you want to fish in the deep water, even on a lake, a lot of guys cast them on lakes and bring them down deep break lines. It also works well for lake trout, I might add, too, out in western Canada. But uh, what I'm going to do is show you where I'm going to fish. The Detroit River has a lot of shipping lanes and different side channels that come through it, and I'm going to fish down these break lines. These fish will migrate heavily. They'll, they could swim miles in a day. And what we're going to do is try to get on them drop-offs and drift down them break lines and jig along them try to intercept them fish as they're setting up to feed. So they might be in 20 foot, they might be in 28 foot. Somewhere on these break lines are going to find a fish. So we just got to get out and fish a bunch of them and find out where they are for the day. Okay, I've told you the theory about jigging for muskie and now I'm going to show you how to do it. We're in about 18 foot of water here. It doesn't take that long for the jig to hit the bottom. It's a seven ounce bait. So as soon as it touches bottom, there, close the bale, give it a couple of cranks to tighten it up, start hopping it. I never want to let this bait drag the bottom. It's just going to pick up zebra mussels and different things on the bottom. I let it hit the bottom and jig it up three to four feet as I go along the river. We have a little bit of a south wind today, so I'm going to take the nose of the boat and go down into the breeze to help stay vertical because you want the boat, the jig, and the current all going the exact same speed down the river. The wind is the enemy. It wants to push us away, so I fight the wind with the trolling motor. So it's important to understand when you're jigging, all you're doing is mimicking a dying fish. A dying fish swims up and falls back down. That's what fish have been keyed in for the centuries to look for, a predator fish, that is. So that's all we're going to do is try and mimic that. It's really important, since this lure is so heavy, to make it fall real slow. That's when the fish is going to grab it. You want to give it the best opportunity it can to grab it. So what I do is I let it fall real slow by letting the lure pull the rod tip down. I do a little bit faster on the up, and I let it fall real slow. Letting it fall real slow gives the fish a bigger arch to go after that bait. If you let it fall too fast, the arch is like this, right? I want that arch to be long and extended. So I want it to swim three to four feet across the bottom when I'm fishing. You know, I often wondered how much water compared to trolling, how much water am I actually covering in a day? So I did the math on it. The Detroit River is 32 miles long and it drains out every 20 hours. That means if I never stop jigging in an eight hour guide trip, we're covering approximately 12.8 miles in a day's time. So we're covering a ton of water and you will contact fish if you keep at it. You have to burn in your mind that this technique works. So we're fishing one of my favorite spots. What we're going to do is drift down this break line. We're halfway down the drop. We're not out in the deep water. We're not too close to the weed line and 14 foot of water is where the weeds are. We're about halfway down the drop. I'll fish this and say 20 foot, make a pass. If I don't get bit, try 23 foot. If I don't get bit, try like, you know, 18. If I don't get bit, we're out of here. The fish aren't here. If I get bit, first thing I do is look at that graph, see the depth. If it's 20.5, I'm going to make my next pass in 20.5. You can guarantee it. I've got the rod positioned under my forearm. So if I got bit right now, I can set the hook, get the foregrip, and pull up hard. 50% of the strikes come in one way and 50% come another way. I've found that almost every bite has come one of these two ways. When you're jigging like this, you'll be halfway to the bottom and that whole rod will just jump. And I'm telling you, that'll be a bite you never forget. The other 50% of the time, and these are the hard ones to get, is you'll be at the top of your lift up here and you'll feel a tap and then everything goes limp. If you feel that, you gotta do the best you can to get that fish because he's got the lure and he's coming up. So those are hard even for me to get, because when you set the hook, you're up here at like 12 o'clock. It's difficult to get those fish, but that's where an eight foot rod comes into play. It helps sweep up more line, get a better hook set on. Fish! Now this is where your tools and your gloves come into play. These fish thrash around and roll like an alligator or a catfish. See that roll like that? That could have easily got me right in the wrist. 
He unhooked himself. So we're just gonna let him out of the net here and let him go. Easy. Thank you, David. Mission accomplished.